Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, our topic today will introduce a new kind of fuzzing on Android, uh, from quantitative change to qualitative change. Uh, actually, it's a new fuzzing uh, perspective to improve the existing fuzzing tools, such as AFL. So let me introduce uh, ourselves at first. Uh, I'm Zhang Qing. Uh, I'm a senior Android security uh, research from Xiaomi company. Uh, my main uh, search file uh, is focused focused on Android security and uh, payment security. Uh, my partner Bai Guangdong is a lecturer from Singapore Institute of Technology. Um, but today he has a class for the students, uh, so the next will be me to introduce all of this, uh, of our fuzzing method. Uh, it's the agenda. First, uh, as we all know, it's harder and harder to um, find the new vulnerabilities. Uh, in my talk, I will analyze the reason of this situation. Uh, then I also summarize the traditional fuzzing uh, methods and discuss the limitation. Afterward, I will introduce our new approach. Finally, I will show some vulnerabilities uh, found by our new approach. Uh, here I list uh, um, some tag those targets of vulnerability identification on Android. Uh, most of the security researchers' attention are paid on these areas. Uh, you can see from user space to kernel space. Uh, the beginning researchers focus on, on the user space, uh, but nowadays more and more researchers um, move their attention to kernel space. It has become uh, harder and harder to find uh, uh, new vulnerabilities. As we all know, it's a low efficiency to find uh, vulnerabilities uh, just by reading the source code. Because modern, um, because modern projects are becoming bigger and bigger. Uh, what's more, some source code is not always available. So um, you have to do uh, reverse engineering sometimes. What uh, do we do? So someone uh, um, go after the low hanging fruit, uh, such as third part libraries or small scale applications. Um, even more, um, someone also think to use AI for vulnerability uh, detection. However, in my opinion, uh, AI is still just a concept in vulnerability detection. There should be a long way to go. Uh, to be used for for AI uh, for vulnerability detecting. Fuzzing technology uh, turns out to be a uh, effective way to find uh, vulnerability. Um, Google also said that most of their security bugs are detected um, using address sanitizer, memory sanitizer, or control flow integrity. Uh, indeed, these tools are very popular and useful. But uh, Fastlink has been well researched and extensively used by Android security researchers to identify the uh, vulnerabilities. Basically, current uh, um, Fastlink methods take into account two coverages. Uh, first one is past coverage. And the second one is input range coverage. Let me show you some uh, example. Pass coverage is aimed to cover as many passes as possible. Uh, Technical such as uh, symbolic execution, sort, bounding, or model checking. Uh, input range coverage is aimed to offer enough kinds of inputs such as pitch or FL. Uh, there are also existing 
uh, some other fuzzing tools such as binder fuzzing or trouser based fuzzing. Uh, so today, I uh, will going to introduce, uh, introduce you a new kind, uh, new kind of fuzzing perspective. Um, this perspective is based on famous philosophy that um, quantitative change leads to qualitative change. This philosophy was proposed by Hegel. Um, this philosophy tells us something changes because um, quantitative change uh, leads to qualitative change. Uh, but we want to ask a question. Is it the same for vulnerability detecting? Therefore, uh, in this work, um, we focus on use this philosophy to improve the existing fuzzing tools. Uh, we found that the fuzzing philosophy are very differ different from the existing tools. So let me show you why and how. Uh, this perspective has two core ideas. The first one is a quantitative change when fuzzing single function point. The idea is very simple. Indeed, our fuzzing function point only once. Uh, we do for for the <coughs> for multiple times. Whenever for quantitative change, uh, when fuzzing multiple function points, we call the function point in several different combinations. Uh, instead of on, uh, call one only function point. Uh, now I will introduce these two ideas in detail. For a single function point, we feed the same test case to test one exposed function point. To our surprise, this can lead to some unexpected results. Why does this happen? Let's think about uh, a written uh, write operation may fail after we have uh, written enough wrong and uh, abnormal data to the system. And also, a read operation uh, may fail after we have written enough times from abnormal or unavailable data source. Let me explain this. Let's assume there is a table uh, which in, uh, include eight data uh, slots. Each data slot can, uh, can be put into 10 bytes. When we try to write a very long input to, uh, to one slot, uh, you can see here, uh, which is what normal fuzzing does. It's safe. Because the program may have the uh, bounded check, this is the reason the normal fuzzing fail to find this vulnerability, uh, no matter how long the input is. However, we can consider uh, another uh, dimension. We simply write a short input for multiple times. It may overflow on, on this dimension because the developer forgot to check this bound, uh, bound on this dimension. This kind of vulnerability op often happened in uh, data storage, such as database or SD card uh, or SQL, uh, SQLite. Um, you may be uh, interested in how we found this. At first, it happened when we try to look at one vulnerability which is can't be easily uh, identified from the log. So we had to excuse the fuzzing tools for multiple times to reduce the scope. During this, we find another vulnerability which is completely different from the one we have uh, been trying to look at. The newly found vulnerability is a permanent vulnerability, and uh, at first we didn't understand this case, the cause. Uh, so we had to uh, factory reset the phone for multiple times to analyze uh, analysis it. Uh, 
After two days uh, exploration, we found out the cause, which is led to our new idea, quantitative change for vulnerability detecting. Uh, this is the demo uh, or example. So this example is a uh, test right of clipboard. Clipboard is uh, um, a binder, uh, binder service uh, in Android. So you can see the at the last uh, we try to write uh, uh, some uh, abnormal data to the uh, service. Here we write uh, a string. No matter how com uh, complete, co complicated the long and the long the string is, no crash is caused. After the write uh, into the clipboard for about uh, 20 times, the system crashed. Uh, this is because the garbage da data is uh, written into the system partition. What's more, it makes the device uh, break. Uh, can cannot boot anymore. Uh, here is uh, another example. As we all know, uh, the NV partition um, cannot be written or even flash the phone. However, uh, we made it. When using one driver, uh, our father managed to write garbage data to the NV parti partition, which overwrites the IMEI. What about multiple function points? We combine multiple function points in one round of testing. The same as the previous one, we got uh, unexpected results. Why does this uh, happen? Because some vulnerability uh, only happened under a certain system state, uh, which is reached by a sequence of function calls. Uh, that means we should consider the function calls which, uh, which may change the system state, such as set, get, write, or read, and uh, the other uh, methods. Uh, again, I will introduce how we found this. It's similar to the previous one, but in this case, we just run the tools twice. Uh, we found that in the, in the function, the read method A is before the write method B. So the vulnerability uh, that doesn't uh, happen in the first time. When fuzzing the, uh, the second time, the vulnerability happens after the read method is excused. So it's the example. You can see uh, the method list. The eight is uh, read, uh, the 11 is write. Uh, at the first time, uh, the write after the read, so it didn't uh, happen. Because um, in, uh, in the 11 uh, write operation, it, it uh, write uh, abnormal data to, to it. But in the second, second time, the, the read after the write, uh, so the read, read the um, first time the uh, abnormal data, so the system crashed. To some extent, this method is similar to the uh, essence of model checking. Uh, how, how, um, someone may say the state space will be huge if we consider all the combinations. However, it's not necessary to combine all the function points, um, uh, such like uh, model checking does. 
we we only need to combine those core functions. Uh, as discussed before, set, get, uh, written, and uh, uh, write and read. Uh, actually, um, uh, for now, we uh, we only did about uh, um, 10, uh, uh, from 1 to 10 combinations. So uh, it's also, um, also bigger. Uh, here is a, a demo. It's about uh, permanent uh, uh, vulnerability. So let's see the results. Uh, using, using these ideas, we have uh, identified uh, about uh, uh, 50 vulnerabilities from uh, various mobile phones. Uh, it includes code acquisition or um, information disclosure or denial of service. And we also were, uh, we were ranked in some uh, vulnerab vulnerability detecting program twice in this year and uh, last year. Um, yes. So, thanks. <laughs> Any question? So we're opening questions on the floor. Hello, thank you for the talk. Yeah. Um, so if I understand correctly, there are two changes here. The first one is we take the same code path, execution path, and basically run it multiple, try to run it multiple times with different inputs, right? Whatever input would execute that, that path or that function. Is that correct? Yes to basically have different inputs on the same function rather than executing it just once. Oh, okay. Um, and this, uh, the second change, uh, yeah, I, I was uh, trying to understand. You, so you try to find the paths which would have like a list of uh, defined function calls. So for example, you want to find an uh, input that both called, calls read and write, something like that, or, or was it something something different, the, the second change. The second um, is uh, actually we, uh, we fasten on one method uh, is, uh, is the first one and, and the other one, but we combine uh, some methods uh, together. Mm -hmm. So it's like one would execute read, another one would execute write. Yes. And then you took these two inputs and combined them together. Yes. Okay, I see. Uh, and the last question, I, would the tool be uh, open sourced? Oh, I will up, update my, uh, uh, my tools to get uh, sewing. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. All right, any more questions? So, how many vulnerabilities are exploitable? Or you try to exploit the, the vulnerabilities? Uh, because some um, some vulnerability detect, uh, uh, detected in uh, the bounty program, so um, some vulnerabilities um, uh, we are not uh, open. Yes. All right. Any more questions? No. All right. Thank you.